Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Anton Raimundo on the Flame of Love show on Radio Maria. Thank you for joining me this week. We have Ted Flynn, author of Gara Bandal, um, and we're going to talk about his latest book that was just launched this week and how it relates to the flame of love and more importantly, to know the uh, effects of the um, messages from Garbandal related to the warning and the great miracle. So before we get into introducing or reintroducing our distinguished guest here, let's pray the three prayers that we have as tradition on the flame of love. First of all, let's um, give honor to the five wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves to the Heavenly Father through all the wounds of our Savior Jesus Christ. We kiss the wound of your sacred left hand with sorrow deep and true. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we kiss the wound of your sacred right hand with sorrow deep and true. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we kiss the wound of your sacred left foot with sorrow deep and true. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we kiss the wound of your sacred right foot with sorrow deep and true. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we kiss the wound of your sacred side with sorrow deep and true. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us pray the Hail Mary with the petition of the flame of love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effective grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let us finish off with the unity prayer. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Well, welcome back, Ted, to the Flame of Love show. Uh, we had you on last year, and uh, thank you again. You know, I, I just wanted to refresh the um, the the memory of some of the um, uh, listeners and and the viewers here. You know, last time when we had you, um, we didn't have the video cast. And so now, I mean, not that people don't know your face already. You've been on the internet. You have, you, you know, you're a director of, of, of different movies and um, all, uh, author of many books and also the publisher of Signs and Wonders magazine with your wife. And, and of course, um, you know, you and your wife started the International Week of Prayer and Fasting. Um, and that's been, what, 30 years now, is it? Uh, we just had, I think, our 31st. Wow, incredible. Well, you know, it's interesting for, for the for the viewers that may not even know um, if they weren't able to catch any of the virtual, but um, Dr. Anton was one of the speakers on Flame of Love. Uh, was it two years ago, correct? Yes. And it's so nice to be with the Flame of Love because we've been so committed to it over the years. I mean, you were a speaker, Tony Mullen, who I we kind of called internally as the Apostle of Flame of Love. We helped him many times over the years, helped promote it on stuff that we were doing. We, I think, did a an, a magazine article on it just last year. It was in our winter edition. So that came out in 2023. And then in the book, I actually mentioned Elizabeth Kindleman as one of the people who spoke about an event very much like the warning. And what is very, very interesting Elizabeth Kindleman's messages started in 1961, which is exactly contemporaneous. Hers went on all, all the way, I think, till 1986. But Garabandal, which we're going to speak about today, actually, um, that ended just in four years and four months. So uh, Flame of Love had the continuity and the longevity, I guess you could say. Yes. And so I do want to uh, thank you for um, coming on my show here. <laughs> And especially, you know, talking about your book, uh, Garbandal, um, 
Let me see if I can get it here. There it is. And I wanted to cite right away the part where you talk about the flame of love on page 64. Um, so I urge uh, all you listeners and viewers there to see if you can get this, uh, the latest book here um, on Garabandal called The Warning and the Great Miracle, The Divine Reset That Will Correct the Conscience of the World. And so, um, so Ted Flynn, he, uh, you, you uh, take the best quote to show the link between Garbandal and the flame of love, and and where we where you quote the flame of love on page sixty four here of your book, it says, um, uh, that uh, the renewal of the earth will take place through the power and imploring force of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Her message also said, due to the lack of faith, earth is entering into darkness but earth will experience a great jolt of faith. And so, and then it goes on that in that dark night, heaven and earth will be illuminated by the flame of love that I offer to souls. It is so great that I cannot keep it any longer within me. It leaps out to you with explosive power. When it pours out, my love will destroy the satanic hatred that contaminates the world. The greatest number of souls will be set free. Nothing like this existed before. This is my greatest miracle that I will do for all. And so I think this is a great segue for us just to write, dive right in to what is the, what is the, the warning and the great miracle and with this updated book. I mean, this is different from the pamphlet that we talked about, the warning in a prior uh, episode on the, flame, on the Flame of Love show. But here you have this really great um, book um, that I'm just so thankful that you just came out with. So Ted, tell us about the warning and um, so people well, will know more about well, I this. Think we, I think we can stop the show. I don't think we need to continue. I mean, and if you really look at what Elizabeth Kindleman said with, through the words of the Blessed Mother and Heaven, she, that and just in that quote there encapsulates from you know an event from heaven a jolt an illumination you know the warning has different words a, a judgment in miniature a viso uh for warning in in more of the, of the spanish you know an illumination of conscience some people equate it to a near-death experience it's much more profound that profound than that much more illuminating and much more comprehensive. But Elizabeth Kindleman put it together. And, you know, I, I intentionally, as a design of the book, there was no beginning nor no end of the people that I could have included on things like with, with an illumination with people from many, many apparition sites, locutionists. And I decided not to for the principal reason, I only did a few that was so descriptive because um, it, it's an event that is just so significant. It's never happened before. It won't be explained by science. The warning can be seen and felt. People forget. We all know it's going to be an interior burning, but it can also be seen in science, as I said, will not be able to explain this event. So the judgment in miniature is basically, or this, it, it, you know, we all have these iPhones and when and everybody takes thousands of pictures with them. And the way that I best describe it is that if, you, if you're in your picture uh, gallery and then you, you can fast forward with your finger and you can stay on some longer to dwell on it, where there is serious sin, it's like a motion picture that goes much slower. So you can see it, all the sins of omission as well as commission that you've committed. It's going to be an event that's so significant that even in areas that we have sinned, we it can show how it's led to others' hurts that we through that sin and how sin has even taken more of a stronghold in our life. I have talked to people, I guess spoken to people over the last 
maybe 30 plus years, maybe as many as 25, I lost count, 25 or 30 people over the years, because I was speaking so much on the Blessed Mother's apparitions, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. And people would come up and they said ex they experienced it. But if there's a few common th things in every single person, every person without exception said it was the single biggest event ever in their life. They could never understand how anything could ever be bigger. And at least to every single person that I spoke to, it changed their life radically. There was one person that I put in a film that I did in 1995. It's a very public story. It was in the film. It's a very, very big man. He was about 280 pounds, six foot five. He had worked in law enforcement in New York City. And then he went down with Drug Enforcement Administration in Florida, the DEA. And, and he had had an immoral lifestyle. It was nothing out of school here. It was his public testimony that he was proud to tell a story of what God did in his life to reverse the slide of sin. And when he experienced the warning, he couldn't get off his kitchen room floor for five hours. Wow. It's such a significant thing. And there are many people, I put two stories in the book, I could have put 50 from, you know, the stories over the years that we've heard. One is Stanley Villavicencio, uh, the Philippine man who actually died and came back to life. And the physician who had declared him dead and he was in the morgue for several days upon seeing him come back to life, literally quit the medical profession and enrolled in the seminary. Unreal. And then there's the story I put in who I, I did a uh, uh, we I, I put this man also in my documentary in 1995. Father Sh uh, Shire, if anybody's heard, he's all yes, over Father Stephen head. Shire. Yes, Father Stephen Shire. So I had interviewed him all the way back in 1995. And then he ended up going on Mother Angelica and she liked the story. And then the story just got big. But he experienced the warning and he saw his whole life go, go before him after being in an awful car, car accident where a truck hit him head on. So these are the types of stories. But if you really, the, the real key question is here is why the warning? What's right. the, what is heaven doing? What's the meaning behind this event? And the way I describe it is where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And that this is heaven meeting, meeting head on this heinous, awful evil that is in our midst right now. That where we, in my opinion, we have become a pagan culture. We're a communist pagan culture. If you look at the practices that government is condoning, paying for, and promoting, that's pagan. We have to change the narrative on this language. This yes. just is an immoral. When you're looking at the things that they're openly paying for, promoting and thrusting upon school children to the first grade. In it, it is. And, th and this also just ties in, you know, with the the, the um, sh short book, the summary of the Flame of Love, the Brown book, the imprimatur was given by the uh, Archbishop of Philadelphia, Archbishop Shaphew. And so he wrote a book about, um, you know, that we're in a post-Christian world. So this definitely in agreement with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I remember reading a book that I really liked it by Chaput. Um, But The Flame of Love was actually uh, approved by Cardinal Peter Erdo, though. Exactly, yes. So this was something that um, Archbishop Chaput approved after that. Right. But it's all based on Elizabeth Kindleman anyway, correct? Yes. And so the thing is just how this ties in again with Garabandal, how, you know, that God has to have this divine reset because mankind is just making it worse to the point there's no other solution to get out of it. That's the why. And I get into quite a bit in the book on the why. Exactly. And, and why there, because there's always the meaning of why heaven does things where a lot of people just look at the circumstances that's being said and they just look at the facts or something. But the question is why heaven is doing this? We know the world is pushing for this great reset. 
Yes. A very, very famous term, the Great Reset. And you I, wrote a book on that too. So I, I hope people great get, yeah, I have it. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, just not a not just to only plug what you did, but from the great transformation and the great reset, um, that you have this published. And so I, again, it, all this it's not a trilogy that you have there. You have so much so many, you're prolific with your with your books, but it all ties in together. But I just love this book. How now you just it's so urgent read and i um so please go on well no for me when i was uh, you know i've been around garabandal now for 40 years i've yeah. heard of it i had heard of it in literally 1984 here we are now in 2024 in the first year of the month wow. first month of the year but when i first heard about it i felt right in my soul this is where everything was headed because as a person who has studied uh, the rise and fall of civilizations, we were following that path. And right now, the American empire is on a steep, steep, rapid, accelerated decline, just like every other empire in world history. So you could see the elements that were in play. Yeah. And so I met a man at church whose father-in-law was very, very close to Joey Lomangino. And now at that time in 1984, I don't think I had ever even heard the word Garabandal. And then, you know, it, it, and I've written probably over the years, several hundred pages from different perspectives on it cumulatively. So then what I decided to do, especially after seeing with a lot of the prophecies that are now visibly moving in the right direction, to a prophetic fulfillment, I decided to put together this book, of which I've lived probably very close to somewhere between a recluse and a hermit in the last year. Well, I, I think I, you're the authority on this, in my opinion, with all the different books and coverage you have on the videos, like the Thunder of Justice video from Max Cole many, many, many de uh, decades ago, back in 92, if I'm not mistaken. That's how I came across you, you and Maureen. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well, it's been an adventure, but this, uh, you know, of, I've been to many of the apparition sites in world in history, probably it, it, due to distance is uh, I, the one I have not seen is Akita, Japan, in English, Akita, Japan. I've never yes. been there, but this is the culmination. I mean, frankly, when I was putting the material together of what the first stage was a data dump, in other words, going back and looking at Kindleman. Now, I've been around this for many, many years. And in the Thunder of Justice, as it turns out, it, it's not a complete definitive anthology of M Blessed Mother's apparitions. But what it is, is the major ones. And the heart and the soul of that book ended up becoming the Garabandal chapters, the warning, the, the warning and the miracle. And that book just exploded in ways that I had absolutely zero idea would would actually happen. Yeah, well, that's where you got world uh, worldwide recognition. Um, so, so um, yes, it's amazing. Yeah, and behind you know every signature of a book or something, the book is now in six languages. And behind every single signature in a book at some speaking engagement, somebody's whispering something in your ear. So yes. you just, I just heard an awful lot. And then many times they'd ask if, you know, that we could have a cup of coffee after the event or we'd go out to dinner or something. And I heard these fantastic stories and they're all in essence the same. The rubrics and the, you have a framework uh, of, of, of a building built. And, and the only thing that's a little bit different is some of the stories of how they were touched and what they saw, but they're all similar. It's the exact same thing. God takes them right where they're at. It's an absolute divine act of mercy. It's, it's the greatest mercy for an individual, any individual can see, where we are being judged as God would see us at judgment. We're being informed in, in the people that do experience this even if there have been heinous sinners which there have been some that i've spoken with that one guy in particular said he would have stomped all over his own mother with his golf shoes unbelievable for anything for advancement and then what happens is their life is radically changed so in my opinion this is going to change the direction of the world i don't think we're there just yet uh, as i said the data frankly overwhelmed me when you look at this all in one place to see what Padre Pio said, Mother Teresa, 
Mother Angelica, Pope Paul VI, John Paul II, and many other bishops, cardinals, and leading people in the world of what they think of this and in what they've said about this is truly, truly amazing. I know. And and there's on the internet, there's different things that I've seen there that some people don't even believe that there is going to be a warning. And so, I mean, there's, but in your book, you list a lot of cre credible people who are saints. And so not to make it, you know, that doesn't make it infallible, uh, you know, of course, and the, the, the uh, prophecy of the great miracle, I mean, the warning and the miracle still has yet to happen, right? But still, you have a lot, a great list of people here, saints and, and so forth. Um, and, and it's interesting, when Mother Angelica was healed, I believe it was 42 years, I forget the exact, I think it was 42 years where she had the leg braces. Oh, right. And when, when she was healed, you know, the one place she went to for Thanksgiving, everybody knew she was devoted to the infant of Prague, the yes. Sacred Heart of Pere Lomagnol, and other places. The one place she went to to give thanks was was uh, Garabandal. Wow, that's I don't think most people know that. No, I, and this is the stuff when you see it, as I say, all in one one place. Well, yeah, I, you put it all together here, and that's why uh, uh, whoever reads this book will see the connection of Garabandal and the Flame of Love, but also how it's pertinent to themselves personally and the world, because just like what you said, the reason for the warning is to correct the conscience of the world and our own self individually. And um, I wanted to dive in a little bit where you mentioned you don't think it's like like right at this moment or right there. And I know you're not the kind to prophesy and put dates in time. That's like disaster if anybody does that. But, you know, you, you say something that, you know, communists will have, well, not you, but I, from the, the messages, communists will have engulfed the world. It'll make, you know, uh, having the mass uh, said it almost virtually impossible and that the communism will go to another level. Now, that seems like it's it's almost here, if not. Well, it is here. I mean, when I say I think we have a way to go. We know that the synod, uh, a synod was mentioned in Garabandal, oh, yes. where events would happen after a synod. So we've had two years already. We've had the local level. We've had the continental level, which took place last October, where people s sat at tables in St. Paul the Sixth Hall. Um, and they, you know, they talked. And so that was that. And then the next one is the universal, which is October of 2024. So we're not, but I think a lot of people are going to expect all, all of a sudden, oh, the synod ended. This is supposed to happen next week, you know, and that's not the case. We right. know that, of, and and it's a very important in the book, and because I've been around this so much, there's a lot of anecdotal stories that have come out over the years that may or may not be true of what was said by uh, either Mary Lowley or somebody else, or where things are deduced or through deductive logic, people come to conclusions. What I did is I just stayed with what the four girls said from 1961 to 1965, which the, the complete from start to finish was four years and four months where the Blessed Mother appeared over 2,000 times. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, think of it, 2,000 times. And many, many of, of the, the sessions with the girls on an individual or corporate basis, they lasted two, two and a half hours, and many of them all night long. So what were they talking about? I believe the girls were in a discipleship mode. So here is a woman that they felt totally comfortable around the Blessed Mother. And they said they talked to her as a friend. They talked to what they were doing that day as a mother. She was so beautiful, they really couldn't describe it, which is very common in, in authentic apparitions. The, the voice was otherworldly. And so you have these young girls that were in a discipleship mode, and they're really as as a body of messages, there's not a tremendous amount of them that actually became public. If you look at maybe uh, any other apparition sites where there's maybe thousands of messages, there, there really weren't a tremendous amount of messages released. So the question is really what was said.
Yes. And, you know, um, looking at some of the quotes from the book, you know, um, you know, where the Blessed Mother told, you know, Conchita that, quote, it would be like an invasion of communism and that the girls described the times of tribulation as a return of communism. And we can see in America that just like we talked about, you know, the post-Christian world and how um, our our uh, what's happening here, uh, it, it seems very much like, well, are we a democratic country anymore or not? And how there was other that the other quote about um, that the warning will be brought about after the church, um, something that it's like a schism, you know, and that's that's uh, some of the words that are going around now in in the, in, in the Catholic circles, right? About from the, the synod and, you know, the schism and how does that all fit in with the warning and the great miracle? Well, let's drill down, especially with the word schism, because it's such a prescient thing today. Yes. Uh, that came, uh, Conchita's brother, his name was Seraphim. Um, uh, he, that word was mentioned, uh, apparently in Spanish in schism, and he asked her about it. But we know, I always put the events of the warning, the miracle, um, and the permanent sign, like th three acts in the same play. I don't make a great deal of distinction between the warning and the miracle and the permanent sign of when events will kick in other than we know a warning, which will be seen and felt by every person in the world is an individual and is an individual event. And then within one year, with the operative word being within one year, all yeah. the way up to 365 days, but we know it can't be anything less than eight because, but we can get into some of those aspects of what the, the miracle is, but then we know uh, right after the miracle, there's going to be some sort of permanent sign. But because they're so closely linked, I actually make them like one play I and see. not say anything will actually happen after that. But we know that Conchita used the word schism. Now, let's say she's 13 years old, because when they started, uh, three of them were 12 and, and Mary Cruz was 11. So, um, would a girl, would a young girl, know the word schism from a mountain village? Probably not, especially the answer, yet in the remote villages of Garabandal. Yeah, I tell you how simple Garabandal was as a village. In 1961, when the Blessed Mother first came there, um, there really, in her first appearance, was July 2nd, 1961, which on our calendar that's actually the Feast of the Visitation. But on the old liturgical calendar, that's actually the Feast of the Ark of the Covenant, which is really, really significant because whenever Moses or whatever had the Ark of the Covenant there, he never lost a battle. The Blessed Mother was coming for battle. Exactly. And wait, and this is the other connection of the Flame of Love, is that in the messages of the Flame of Love, the Blessed Mother is called the New Ark of the Covenant. So it's very interesting when the Flame of Love... Uh, locution started in 1961, and here Garbandal starts in 1961, and then your it 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 occurred July 2nd, 1961, on the feast of the Ark of the Covenant. I mean that there's to me there's a direct connection right there. Oh yeah, you you see these connections, and one of the beauties of this, there were certain days when I was looking at these type of connections, which I didn't really get a lot into. I may give it a sentence or two but I made sure I kept the book on Garabandal. I, mean, sure. I could have very easily gone off in, into the wild blue yonder and picked daisies. But, you know, uh, I decided just to make it about Garabandal because Garabandal is going to live or die on its own. Exactly. When, the, when the church renders a judgment on apparitions, they make a point of, they don't actually go back and say, well, gee, Fatima said this, that's approved. Akita said this, that's approved. Flame of Love said this, that's approved. So, it, but it has to stand on its own. So I didn't try to prop it up, but we, we know with the direction of the church today, we were just literally out to breakfast with some friends after church yesterday, three friends. It was probably a two and a half, three hour lunch. And I got to tell you, a great deal of the conversation 
talked about what's happening in Rome right now with the proclamations of a lot of their policies. You yeah. can't be in a conversation any longer with a person who is who is really a believer where this issue doesn't come up. Yes, it is. And so, you know, going back to the the schism, you know, the word there and also with the synod, because, you know, how did that come about um, about, you know, um, the connection there of, of uh, the girls knowing learning about some sort of the word synod even? Right. Well, let, 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 let me say something, because I don't want anybody to be confused. Conchita never said uh, that there would be a schism. The word schism was just simply mentioned. OK, that's all, you know, and, and I think it's significant. But Conchita's never said there would be a schism. So that's where I, I you know, I, I quote Sergeant Joe Friday of Dragnet in, in the uh, in the book, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Right. So I, I try. I, I made a concerted effort not to go off and try to make connections, but I just present the data. But okay. to the word schism, <clears throat> Conchita, when she was actually at a boarding school in Burgo, Spain, at about sixteen years old, she t she told uh, one of the nuns there, a sister Nieves Garcia, that you know the events would happen um, after a synod. Now, we know in, in the word, she said, like a council during the apparition, she said, the, I think her mother said, you mean like a council? She said, no, a synod. And we've had synods and councils in the church forever and ever and ever. You can go all the way back. But we have never had one quite like this, where Rome opened up the church um, where everything started literally not at the just the diocesan level, but the parish level for listening sessions where people could go in and say, you know, we think the church should move in this direction. And all of a sudden the pastors or the priest hears this and then they they pretty much make a report and send it into their bishop. So we've never had a synod ever like this, where the church went out and had these listening sessions like this. So there's a tremendous uniqueness in that alone. So you can see prophetically another issue is that the Pope going to Moscow was another one. Which yes. I, I'm sure you've heard about that. Oh, for sure. Can you get into that a little bit here? Yeah, it, 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 I, I give a considerable narrative to it in the book. And it, it's actually quite simple in its raw elements. Um, Pope Francis has history with Patriarch Kirill of, of uh, Russia. And they met first, uh, I should go back and look, it's either 2015 or 16 in the Havana, Cuba airport. And they met and it's very, very cordial. And, and you know, Francis always spoke to, about him like my brother. And we know that Rome, Rome, the Latin Rite, would like to see the reunification, which we'll get into very quickly in one of the messages of what's said there, because it's really, really significant. But the Pope has wanted to go to Moscow. That, that There's no mystery to that. He visited the Moscow embassy after, you know, Russia, the Russian embassy in Rome after they invaded Kiev and the Ukraine. And so and then there was emissaries going back and forth, cardinals going back to Moscow and Kiev to hopefully get a meeting. And then the most recent is when Francis was on his way to Mongolia. He used that uh, pretense that he would like to refuel in Moscow and hopefully could meet uh, Kirill there because the prophecy to go right to that is when the pope returns Russia would run over Europe. Mm. Now, literally, I got an, uh, an email today where all of the Polish army are told they have to report for duty within six hours of getting a notice wow. or, they, or they can be put in prison for five years. Now, that came out literally this morning. Incredible. And another one I saw because people know I've, I've written on this and they know I have an interest in it. Germany is actually preparing for war with Russia. So if somebody were right to listen to this, they could just go back and Google uh, Polish military put all of their soldiers on notice to report in six hours. Well, well this goes into the question, though. Did Conchita ever say there would not be a third war, third world war? 
Um, because we're getting all this mobilization here. And yet we know that there's that quote, um, you know, about there's going to be a reunification of Christians. And Flame of Love has this unity prayer, which I just prayed in the beginning. So we're praying for unity. And then here, Kirill and then Pope Francis. And then now there's this movement of armies. How does all this all fit? It's kind of confusing. Well, let's do this because we could talk about this for about another six or seven hours and, and drill down and everything. So let's try to do two things, I think. Okay. We know that we know the sizzle and the fat in the fire is really the miracle. And there's there's a lot of interest on that. And there's more data points actually on the miracle than there is on the warning. Mary Lowley um, Lafleur, who died in uh, 2009, she was the only one who knew the year of the warning, but there was going to be no announcement. It's Conchita who knows the day of okay. the miracle. So we can get into that, but back, yeah. back to this thing on a third world war. Let's put that in the context. In, in October of 1962, we knew the world was on great edge with Khrushchev, with all of his warships motoring on towards Cuba. Uh, it, President Kennedy was coming on TV trying to soothe, soothe the nerves of Americans that, you know, there could be a third world war. So without getting into a great deal of that history, Conchita was asked, will there be a third world war then? And, okay. and, and then Conchita said no. And there's some really, really good people okay. that say that goes to perpetuity. I'm not one of them. I believe the context of that question is because we know the world was tremendously anxious and tense that there could be a third world war because Khrushchev was very, very clear that he didn't respect Kennedy. And so he tested him. And then it, it was a, a game of great brinksmanship all the way to the very end where the, uh, the the ships just turned around. So, you know, it would logically that makes uh, sense. Would logically assume, will there be a third world war when you're asked that question? And Conchita said no. So in that respect, it didn't happen. So those people that say that are right. But I'm not one of the people that believe that that was to perpetuity. So let's look at what's going on now. We have 30 NATO nations where I just saw just last week, the UK have committed another $3 billion to Zelensky in the Ukraine. Finland, which has an 800 mile border, that's from us on the East Coast all the way to Chicago from pretty much where you're sitting and I'm sitting nearby. So that's an awful long way where Finland has a border. And then you've got all of the other NATO nations that are coalesced in providing uh, uh, equipment and everything to defeat Russia. You have China, a lot of uh, Muslim nations providing equipment and intel um, to Russia. We, you have um, Iran providing all sorts of drone technology and, and munitions. So my question is, is, is this a third world war? Because don't forget in the United States and Vietnam, the government called it a conflict. Oh, 50,000 right. 50, American deaths later and hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese. So, you know, was it a conflict or a war? So you can manipulate the language on that. But the fact is, we right now have a third world war. Wow. Now let's go into the miracle here because uh, we probably got about, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes left, um, you know, about the miracle that it's going to be a great event and how um, that uh, I think you go into the what it what the real translation is supposed to say um, that it's a particular event in the church or a, or a or a, a specific occurrence. And so um, can you get into the miracle? Because, you know, um, supposedly the reigning pope will see this great miracle from where it is. So if we're in act two of your um, play of, of you understanding and the permanent sign, help us understand the two, the miracle and the great sign. Well, this is where there's a lot more data and we can go over this. And each one of these, we could spend a, com a considerable amount of time, but we'll just hit the major point of exactly what's been said. And people can can pretty much interpolate that information on their own. Now, there was something that was said at the outset that when the miracle happens, it will be the conversion of the whole world and specifically Russia. 
Think of that. At Fatima, it, it was about Russia. At Garabandal, it's about Russia. Think of that. It, yeah. it, Blessed Mother didn't say China. She didn't say the Persian Gulf. She didn't say Iran. She didn't say Islam in general, which we see what's going right now in Yemen of how this thing's getting bigger, where they're saying Israel. is. She didn't say Israel. She didn't mention the United States, but she specifically mentioned Russia again. So there's something to this country with literally 11 time zones that stretch from in the east from Vladivostok to the west to St. Petersburg. So this is a very, very big place. And there isn't any way Ukraine could have ever beaten Russia. They're yeah. just simply too small. And there's just too much equipment, munitions, and armaments inside this monstrous, what was formerly the USSR, now the yes. republics. So this is, Russia will be converted, and something was said there that's really another one of the great promises. The Blessed Mother said, and then all will love our hearts. Yes. The sac that sacred and immaculate heart. So the promises coming out of this are otherworldly. And this is the hope. This book and this this apparition is about hope. The people who have proofed this book for me said the best single possible thing that they could have ever said in a text or an email to me. They felt great hope. They were all anxious about the the de the accelerated decline of our culture as well as our church. And this is God's divine reset. So let's go over quickly. What do we have? About ten minutes. Yes. We can we can just hit these points quickly. It's going to the miracle. It's going to coincide with an event in the church. So on October first, nineteen sixty one, Our Lady of Mount Carmel at Garabandal told something very important to Conchita. It had to do with a future major church event where there would be the reunification of the Christians. In, in flame of love deals with that. So in, to, if there's a reunification that by virtue of definition, that implies there was a split. Now, the Catholic Church never had a, a, a unity ever with Islam uh, as one of the three monotheistic faiths, but there was never a unity of doctrine. So one, a big event that happened was the split of the Eastern Rite with the Western Rite in 1054. And here's something that, that I was researching, that the reunification of Christians. In 1054, the document was actually signed on July 16th, 1054, the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Incredible. So these are the things that you see fit together where heaven, you know, heaven's playing master level chess and we're playing jacks, you know, <laughs> yes. we're, playing tiddly, we're playing tiddlywinks and jacks. Yeah. And, and flame <laughs> of love. Uh, when our lady talked to Elizabeth Kindleman, she actually was t t telling her how she's trying to recruit the Carmelites. So uh, this, again, this goes hand in hand. Go, go on, Ted. Yeah. And then the description quote of a great event in the church is an exaggerated, but poor translation of the original spoken by Conchita. It is incorrect to translate the phrase as a great event in the church. The actual phrase was, in Spanish, can be translated, quote, a particular event in the church, which is an occurrence, or a specific event or an occurrence in the church. So there's gaps in this material. There's no question. This isn't a very uh, linear um, no, not at all. Mosaic. But but when you look at the data, it's truly, truly amazing. It takes your breath away when you see what if a person has been following what heaven has been doing, like a lot of your followers with flame of love. This is an extension and is a compliment. That's what yes. this material is. And one of the data points, though, I, I know you, you still have to go through the other parts that I'm just jumping ahead where, you know, we're in the three year eucharistic revival and um it the one part that sticks out to me here of some of the data points is that the great this great miracle it'll be on the feast day of a young martyr of the eucharist and so i you know uh that's just part of it i mean let's get into you know the 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 background like when's it going to happen and so forth well look at let we'll I'll, I'll say it quickly without a lot of other anecdotal stories because we're fighting the clock here it will be the 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 definite article the 
the greatest miracle ever performed by Jesus for the world. It is supernatural and has never been seen before and will not be ex explained by science. The Blessed Mother said, this material is not to be comprehended by the human mind. That's what's coming. And, you know, if you had been Moses, could Moses, when he started saying, let my people go, could he ever have imagined that he was going to march through the Red Sea and it was going to split for him? Great point. Yes. And frankly, there was a shorter route for the Jews to go. Oh, these people. Okay. What it was is God wanted to show his glory to the Hebrews. Wow. You know, and he did. There was a shorter route if you look at that map. But God wanted to show his glory. This stuff is beyond our comprehension. Padre Pio will see the miracle, which he did before he died, and he told friends. Padre, I have a lot in the book on, on Padre Pio. He was very, very committed. What he said, what he did when he met Conchita and other stories. The reigning pope will see the great miracle from wherever he is. Before the miracle, something will happen that will cause people to stop believing in Garabandal. Some of that has happened, and I'm concerned that if some of these events don't happen, like maybe if a pope does go to Moscow or the, uh, the events aren't after the synod, people could fall away. So something happens where people fall away. And to a certain extent, because I have a section in the book called Legitimate Areas of Concern and Confusion. And one of them is Joey Lomangina was supposed to receive his sight, the blind apostle of Garabandal. Well, he died. So, yeah. you know, so there's those areas. They're legitimate and there could be some reasons for that. But, you know, but then again, as I say, the miracle hasn't happened yet. The miracle will occur on a Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. in Spanish time. That's specific. You know, that's specific. The miracle will happen between the dates of the 8th and the 16th of March, April, May, or June. Now, a lot of people say April because a very good friend of Garabandal by the name of Maria Sirocco allegedly says that Mary Lowley told her that it was in the month of April. That is possibly true, possibly not. Does more information leak on some of these things over years? Yes, it does. But I just say specifically what the girl said. Nobody mentions March, but I saw a VHS tape many, many years ago, 25 years, 30 years ago, it was a VHS tape of Conchita with, uh, with an interview in Ireland where she had her young kids outside the interview room because they were talking about them. And she mentioned March, April, May, or June. So that's from her lips. So is, but I can, you know, so you can't say no, never say never, never, you never say always. Right. It will be, uh, according to Mary Lowley, the miracle will take place within one year after the warning. Now we know many visionaries have actually said, you know, there's a short duration of time. Maybe, maybe not, you know, but the girls never said that. So the operative word is within one year. So potentially 365 days. It will be on the feast of a young, uh, a young martyr of the Eucharist. I put several candidates, but there's probably a thousand more. So I don't think these really make a lot of sense in the definitive anthology of young Eucharistic martyrs. It doesn't say whether it's a female or a male or a young girl or a young boy. Yeah, what, what comes up to mind real quick, though, because, you know, a, a blessed Carlos Acutis, too, you know, uh, he did the Eucharistic miracles on, on the website. Not that he was a martyr, but the fact that, you know, he, he's getting a lot of uh, notoriety uh, about that, uh, you know, with that, that website and how he, he was a young Eucharistic, you know, um, devotee um, dying at age 15. Anyway. Well, in my study of these apparitions now over my whole adult life, which has been just a great joy in, in a time of enrichment and the thousands of people we've met as a result of these relationships. And it's been a true joy and contentment and peace. But I, I, I've always said that the way that these things happen will not be as we think, hmm. but it will happen exactly as it was said. So right. could, could Carlos Acutis be one? 
on maybe possibly is he going to he's beatified i guess so will he be made a saint we saw his mother about six months ago and she was a speaker for us last year at our event where she was filmed actually up in uh pennsylvania and let us use that tape so all those in the village and the surrounding mountains will see it it will be possible to photograph and televise but not touch it it will be seen in the sky it will last about 15 minutes. And here's a zinger. I've seen 15, 20, 25 minutes at different times. Doesn't matter. You know, is the miracle going to last 15 or 25? If people want to split hairs over that, so what? Um, if they'd, have a, they'd be the same people probably having a problem with Jesus Christ walking the earth. You know, right. And we, we have five minutes, unfortunately, left, Ted. Sinners and non-believers will be converted. The incredulous will believe. Now, here is a beautiful one. All there, who, all those who travel to Garabandal will be cured. Oh, I wish I can go then. <laughs> well, we'll get you there. We'll get you there. The, you know, if you got it, whatever you need to do. But it, but think of it. What a promise. A person who every single person has known somebody who has been very, very ill Nobody can deny it, every single family member, and they went on a promise. Could you imagine the testimonies that will come out of that? Yes. And Garabandal is like this natural amphitheater where you're looking down on the nine pines in the Cantabrian mountains of northwestern Spain. Millions could look comfortably down on the nine pines. Millions, if you look at an aerial photograph on the net of what is a natural amphitheater and stadium type seating looking down on that on, on an angle and a bevel where everybody could sit comfortably. Russia will be converted after the miracle. Conchita, who knows the date of the great miracle, will, will announce it to the world eight days in advance. Conchita said that about this event, before the miracle, there will be many reported apparitions throughout the world. And a bishop will come along of Santander, who will come along, who will not believe at first, but will receive a sign and allow priests to go to Garabandal for the miracle. Uh, the, the, um, a bishop in 2012 um, uh, celebrated mass there, and the present bishop, Mungi, who has been there from 2015 to president, present he's kept all of the policies of his predecessors garabandal has never been affirmed or disapproved by the church they've left it alone to wait to see what happened as i believe they should this should not be approved by the church which they have not done because we wait we have to wait to see if these events do happen right um we got a couple of minutes left now ted can we get into the permanent sign Permanent sign, there's not a lot of information. We know that, you know, there will be something left until the end of times. So, you know, again, it'll be, it, it, it's a validation, you know, to, for something where Isaiah spoke about, especially Isaiah 50 to, through chapter 58, the, chip, the odds were like several billion to one thousands of years in advance where these prophecies of Joel, Malachi, Isaiah, and others could have said these things that were said, and then they came true. So when these things were said, they happened. And so when you look at what was said with a permanent sign, this has been in writing now since the early 60s that there would be a permanent sign. And we, I, you know, will it be at the Nine Pines? Probably, but we don't know. We, there's not a lot of information on what the permanent sign is. Yes, and there's different apparitions too, whether it's from Faustina or other, um, uh, I don't know if it's Saint, um, uh, the doctor of the church, uh, St. Uh, Hildegard of Bingen, um, might have said something something similar to these. Um, but anyway, you know, there's just so much that we, that we can only cover here in these 50 minutes, Ted. You know, I'm going to have to have you come back at another time. Uh, I know you've did, you've done you know, four part series uh, just recently. Uh, I'm just so glad and fortunate to have you on the Flame of Love show so we can at least show, you know, the connection of the Flame of Love to Garabandal. I urge everybody to buy the book Garabandal by Ted Flint. It just came out this week. Um, anything else you want to have as far as parting words? 
Yeah, they can go to sign.org. Matter of fact, right now there's a big sale on it. We're blowing them out early and it's been it's been discounted, but it's also on Amazon and Kindle. There's awesome. always been some requests actually from overseas already. So I put it on Amazon and Kindle. All right. Well, you tickled our ears uh, to say the least to go dive into this book. And I thank you again for joining uh, me here, Ted. And I want to have you come back at another time. And God bless you all, uh, Flame of Love devotees and all the new listeners here on the Flame of Love show on Radio Maria. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you.